The jmol draw command is a great tool to use to inject creativity into your jmols. It can be used to draw everything from arrows to lines to points to planes and there are a lot of built-in special things that the draw command can do that you might find interesting. One of the first things I'll draw your attention to is the interesting draw Ramachandran parameter. Using draw Ramachandran you can draw curved arrows for selected residues that show the phi and psi angles and label the residues with the actual numbers. This might be interesting to do around the active site of a protein that your molecule interacts with. You can also draw helix axes for helices in proteins. And, interestingly, you can automatically draw the symmetry elements of your molecule using draw point group, as long as the conformation that the molecule's in, in JMOL, is actually symmetric. One thing you should keep in mind while drawing objects using JMOL is that every object has a name, and this includes isosurfaces and molecular orbitals as well. You can assign a name to every object you draw as the first parameter of any command you issue. If you don't specify the name of an object, then every time you try to draw a second object of the same type, the first object will get replaced. So for instance, if I had a JMOL on which I wanted to draw two arrows, then I would have to provide two different names for each arrow in order for both to appear. I could use the draw obj1 command to draw the first arrow from atom 1 to atom 3, and then to draw the second arrow I would have to change that label from obj1 to something different, say obj2. Drawing an arrow to a different point now produces two arrows on the jmol. To redirect obj1, all I have to do is specify a different point for obj1, and it will automatically change where that arrow is going. The arrow object in particular is interesting because we use arrows to represent the flow of electrons. These arrows are typically curved, however, and so you'll have to think of a creative way to curve an arrow. You can add a third point to give a curve to an arrow, but where you get the coordinates of that third point is up to you. To turn drawn objects off, just type draw off. Let's see if using draw point group shows us the plane of symmetry inherent in the enemy. And sure enough, there it is. Notice that we can reflect through that plane and get the same molecule out. There are two ways to specify points in JMOL to which objects can go or from which they can issue. And these two ways are coordinates and atom expressions. Atom expressions are the same as the select commands parameters. Things like chain equals A or atom number equals 5. Those are atom expressions and they return a set of atoms on which the next command will act. For draw commands that specifically go to a single point, if an atom expression returns multiple atoms, the geometric center of that group of atoms will be the point that the command sees. This can be useful in drawing curved arrows, for instance, because you can specify the center of a large group of atoms, and this will end up being an empty point in space to which you can have the curve of the arrow pass through without any awkwardness. The second are coordinates, and coordinates in JMOL are specified between curly brackets with three numbers, x, y, and z. It can be difficult to see the location of coordinates on the model because different models have different origins. You should note that even if you turn axes on on your JMOL, the origin of the axes may not be the origin of your JMOL model. Either experiment with coordinates as you're building drawn objects, or use the JMOL coordinate finder, part of the Butane JMOL repository, to really pinpoint coordinates within your model. Using the coordinate finder can save you time later because you can note the coordinates of important points in your model. 